Hello and welcome to this presentation on averaging. In this presentation we're going to talk about the challenges of dealing with machine variation that varies quite a lot and what will happen to the average in that instance. So just as a quick reminder, averaging is there for us to reduce the effects of noise to give us a good repeatable measurement so we can compare measurements and know that the only thing that changed is the condition of the machine and not the fact that we've used too few averages and to listen long enough so that the machine has told its story. You know, as the gears turn around, as the bearings roll around, there's modulation, there's different sounds, and we need to listen to it long enough that we've heard all of those things so that it's included in the spectrum that we ultimately look at. But in this presentation, we're going to look at what happens if there's any modulation or beating. Uh, if you look at a live spectrum, you'll sometimes see peaks that rise and fall. But if you've never looked at a live spectrum, you won't know that that's happening. The average gives you just one averaged view of the spectrum. So, just as a quick reminder to how averaging works, if we choose four averages, the analyzer grabs four spectra. And it says, let's have a look at those spectra in greater detail. And for every single frequency, every bin or line of the spectrum, it will calculate the average value. It'll take all four values, add them up, divide them by four when there's four averages. That's what that complicated looking thing is trying to tell us. Okay? Now, if the variation, if the vibration at these frequencies is all very constant or close enough to it, then the average represents really what the vibration normally is for the machine at that frequency. Down here where we see a lot of variation, the, the average represents the average of the noise. We're saying, oh, there's all that random noise, we just want to average it together. But if you see a case where the average doesn't look like the same amplitude as the peaks, if you look at some of these values here, it means that there must have been more variation at those frequencies. And you've just got something which is just an average of all that variation, which may be, may be okay for repeatability, as long as you've got enough averages, um, but it doesn't really give you a representation of what the machine's doing. So, let's have a look at that. Um, what I'm going to do is show you some real data from a real machine so that we can have a look at what happens if we've got a small number of averages and then if we repeated the test after a moment, what, how we'd see variation. But just to reveal the fact that we are missing some information from the machine. The time waveform helps us reveal that information that we've lost. Uh, if you look at the time waveform, you might see beating and modulation. But if you just look in the spectrum, other than looking for sidebands in the case of uh, modulation, you, uh, you wouldn't know that it happened at all. So let's bring up this, uh, this is I teach vibration, and this particular program here. And what it's doing is it's showing us, in this case, 30 seconds of vibration. And in order for the analyzer to work, you know, it just grabs one chunk, depending on the resolution, and gives me the spectrum. And then I can go through an averaging process. Now, I'm just going to show you this in a bit more detail. At least, I've got some more options here. What I'm going to do is grab some data here. Now, there's a few, I've got quite a few examples where this happens. You might be surprised at just how often this sort of thing happens. But what I'm going to do, now I've actually, yep, I've got 30 seconds of data. What I'm going to do here is play the vibration, and you can listen to it, and, but watch the spectrum. Now, you could probably hear the beating, that sound. Well, that sound, that tone, was this frequency right here. Let's just zoom in on that. I mean, it was, it was doing in other places as well, but we'll just focus on this one. So I'm just using 800 lines of resolution right now. And again, if we go through and just watch, as I click the button, it's just going to take another little chunk of time, just as it would during the averaging process, and we'll see how this amplitude changes. Bring a bit higher, lower, lower, 
lower, much lower, much lower, hardly anything, up, up, up. Now, this presents a challenge because you've just noticed how it's gone down and up again. Now, that process, if you look here, it says 12 averages. It took 12 averages to do that. Let's just repeat that process. I'm going to turn the average option on. The light grey spectra you see will be the, the individual spectra that the analyzer collected. The orange is the average. So if we go through, there's first average, second average, see that didn't vary very much, third, fourth. Now, notice that if we took four averages, we would get that spectrum now and it looks great. I'll demonstrate in just a second that if we happen to press the go button just a split second later we could end up with a spectrum with no peak at that frequency at all. Imagine if your baseline looked, had something there and your next spectrum had a great big peak there. I'll demonstrate that in a second. Anyway, I want to keep going with this. Five averages, six averages, seven averages, eight averages. Now you notice that I've got some peaks down the bottom here. There are times when there was almost no vibration generated at that frequency and up here. Now when I say no vibration, there's probably two sources of vibration interfering with each other. It's beating, it's cancelling itself out and it's adding together. So it's, it's beating up and down. So you notice that in this case, that if I take nine averages, you know, ten averages and so on, notice if I keep on clicking this button, even though the actual vibration is going to keep going up and down, up and down, uh, that orange now won't change very much because it varies higher and lower, higher and lower, but the average is pretty much staying constant. So, you know, if we use enough averages, we will end up with something that's repeatable, but we have no idea that this bounced up and down. And because this waveform here, which I can show you in, in uh, more detail, this little chunk of time here is what we see there. This is the time waveform you would get if you ask for time wave uh, for time waveforms part of your data. That's another story. There's more I could tell you on that. But, but you, you could never tell there was any beating going on just by looking at this time waveform. Anyway, let's just go back to our spectrum. We went through all those averages. So you can see, and I can pull up lots of sources of data and you'll see exactly the same thing. Just at certain frequencies, there's some beating going on, there's some modulation, and the peaks are, well not modulation, but the peaks are, you know, are going up and down. So, um, what I do would like to demonstrate is something I can do here. I'm just gonna quickly look at something Okay, now what I'm going to do is in this demonstration here, the start of time represented by the time you press the go button on your analyzer was right here. But what if we waited just a little bit? Now just bear with me for a sec. What if we actually came up to the machine and pressed the button just a little bit later. Now, I'll get this demonstration right in just a second. Anyway, close enough. If I, this little bit of time here, if I just delayed, I just looked up, oh, Haley's Comet, and then pressed the button, and I asked for four averages, look what I'd get. My first average, second average, third average, fourth average. So you see that in one instance my four averages would give me this but if I took it a little bit earlier my four averages one, two, three, four would give me this. So you see that having a short number of averages can get you into trouble. If your first measurement had a little itty bitty peak there you'd take no notice. Second uh, spectrum had a great big peak, you'd be thinking, where's that vibration come from? What has changed in the machine between last time and this time? Absolutely nothing has changed in the machine between last time and this time. You've just taken too few averages. Now if I just reset that and show you what would happen if I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. So there's, well, let's just round it off. I just did 10 averages. What I'm going to do is draw a reference spectrum there, nice little red line. And then what I'm going to do is go back, reset it, offset the time by a little bit, whatever, and then go through again and choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's not exactly right. In fact, that red line didn't draw in the right place. The two orange lines are around about in the same place. So if I take ten averages, I will get repeatability. If I use four averages, I will not. Anyway, I hope that demonstration didn't confuse too much and just sort of helped understand that there is a lot of variation in your vibration and the averaging uh, can mislead what's really going on with the machine. So, what do you do if you suspect it? Well, certainly if you hear any beating, if you hear that sound, um, then you know that's what's going to happen inside your spectrum. So, one solution is to have a larger number of averages and it will be repeatable at least. Uh, if you look at live data, sit there with your analyzer and just, if, you, if you've got the option, watch the data live. As I mentioned, listen for the modulation and the beating. Compare two spectra. Just sit there with four averages and say, take one measurement, take another one, take another one and see if there's variation between them. Um, as I mentioned, use a number of uh, longer number, sorry, a larger number of averages helps and then if you've got a time waveform you may see that there's modulation. The trouble is you normally need more time than you would normally collect. You might need 10 seconds of time to see that sort of modulation as compared with just you know the milliseconds you might normally capture. Anyway, I hope that presentation has been helpful and informed you about something you weren't aware of before. Thanks very much.